All right, so now we're coming to calibrating the head. Uh, we need to calibrate the head in order to verify the sensors and tell the sensors what is what. Sensors, I mean the oxygen sensors, and what and what, what is what, I mean what is air and what is pure oxygen. If we tell the sensors what is air and what is pure oxygen, the electronics know that, and then they have benchmarks to identify what type of mix or oxygen percentage we have inside a rebreather. Very crucial step. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the electronics and I switch on both handsets. Now the handsets are coming on. I don't know if you can see that. Now the clicking sound you maybe just heard is the solenoid being tested. I have very good sensors. I have 21% uh, 21 21 on all three sensors on both handsets. I changed to a manual set point here so the solenoid does not try to inject oxygen. Actually, I don't have to really calibrate them uh, because the sensors are so great, but I'm going to do that anyway. I think it's good practice and it's good procedure to calibrate every at the beginning of every diving day to calibrate your oxygen sensors. Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my head on top of the unit because I need to have access to my oxygen, which I now slowly turn on in a moment. I first going to block, partially block the, ex the exhalation or exhaust side of the head because I'm going to inject pure oxygen into the head exposing the heads to pure oxygen. The, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to calibrate the heads to air, to ambient air. I go into the menu looking for my calibration menu. And I'm going to tell the electronics the sensors are now in ambient air. So that's my first benchmark. All right. Here I can see as well the millivolts now of my uh, oxygen sensors. If you may recall, the millivolts should be between 8 and 13 millivolts. I have a reading of 10.9, uh, 10.8, and 11.1. So my sensors are great. And I have both handsets individually taking the millivolts and the reading of the sensors. So I can see in here as well 11.1, 10.8, 11.1. 10, Very close to each other, not exactly the same but there are two separate electronics taking the reading of the sensor. So the interpretation might be a little different, but close, very close. And the, the sensors are very good because they should begin between 8 and 13 millivolts. So now that I have told my electronics what is the ambient air, I'm now going to tell it what is pure oxygen because I analyzed the oxygen before. I'm going to slowly opening up the oxygen tank Knowing I have 100% O2 in here because I analyzed it, I will now use part of the head calibration kit, plugging it into the head. So now the head is contained, or the, the spare, the airspace inside the head is contained, and I'm going to fill it with pure oxygen using the oxygen of my oxygen tank. Knowing it's oxygen because I analyzed it. Right. Here's the, uh, the low and pressure inflator hose from my manual oxygen injector. I'm going to connect these two. I can actually make sure that I have a flow. Yes, there is a slight flow coming out of oxygen. And now I'm going to let the head being saturated with pure oxygen. That's going to take a while. While I'm going to let the head being saturating with oxygen, I'm going to look at my loop here my loop and my mouthpiece and I'm using a BOV a bailout valve instead of the DSV which is a diver surface valve because I believe that the diver should have immediate access to bailout gas without removing the mouthpiece of the rebreather and then I have my connecting hose over here that is connecting to my bailout tank which I'm carrying on the side okay what I need to check now is there are two mushroom valves inside the mouthpiece here. One is over here and one is over here. They are taking care that the gas flows only in one direction. If I would not have these mushroom valves here, the gas, when I'm inhaling, exhaling, would just move back and forth. And I can't allow that because if it would move only back and forth in front of my mouth, then it would not go through the scrubber canister, which I'm wearing on my back. 
So I need to have these mushroom valves in here and they need to be tested. They need to be tested every time I'm assembling my unit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my, mouth, my mouthpiece here and then I'm going to close both ends of the loop. And if I'm inhaling, exhaling, I should not be able to get a breath in or out. And that shows me that the mushroom wells are working fine. Oh, yep, they're working great. So that's a very integral part of finding out how well these mushroom valves are working. If they don't work well, you cannot go diving with the rebreather. Well, let's go back to our calibration here. While I was checking out the mushroom valves, here now I can see that my millivolts are slowly moving up. We are now in the 35 millivolt range. They should go over 45 millivolts. And since the flow of oxygen is so low here, that uh, it's going to take a while. The really important part is that if you calibrate to pure oxygen, the millivolt cannot move anymore. It does not really matter where the millivolts are. They could be 45, they could be 48, they could be 50, 52. It does not really matter where they're at. They should be over 45 and they should be stable. Once they are stable, that means that we have pure oxygen in the head. And once we have pure oxygen in the head, we're going to calibrate the unit. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, that's good. I have 48, 48, 48. All right, and I'm going to calibrate. I'm going to confirm, confirm. All right, so now I have the unit calibrated, and now my electronics know what is oxygen and what is air. And with that knowledge, the electronics will know and will predict and will display what the oxygen content is inside the loop.